Chapter 6. Serious Stuff. Today's horoscope. You make a discovery that could change everything. Romance is in the air. Watch out for that new person in your life. You probably want to know what happened to Marsha's father. At lunchtime the next day at school, Marsha told me that he had fallen in love with another woman. Now they're living with each other. He left two years ago. I was a bit shocked. To tell you the truth, I didn't really know what to say next, and when I did, I wished I'd kept my mouth shut. That's gross. Marsha snorted back at me. <laughs> Grow up, Rob. This remark made me feel small and pathetic, and I don't mean in the cuddly hamster kind of way. I mean that snapped rubber band feeling, and a manky wet rubber band at that. I, don't under I couldn't understand how Marsha could be so cool about such a thing. I'm sorry, I offered. That's exactly what my dad said when he left. Marsha answered in a tight voice. Do you miss him? She nodded and said brightly that she could... And I said brightly that she could have my dad if she wanted. Don't joke about it, Rob. You'd miss him if he wasn't there, I'm telling you. Marsha gave me a twisted kind of smile. You don't want to, but you do. This was getting embarrassingly heavy for me and I desperately tried to change the subject. Why did your mum ask if you'd been stargazing again? It's my hobby, astronomy. Everything began to click into place, how Marsha had known about distant galaxies and all that stuff. I'll go out sometimes with the telescope Dad gave me last year. I have to go out at night. You can't see the stars by day. I do know that. Of course you do, but my mum doesn't. She doesn't like me going out when it's dark. I was struck by a thought. Maybe she doesn't like it because you're using the telescope your dad gave you. Marsha gave me a sharp look. Never thought of that. Quite a little psychologist, aren't you? I suppose you read about it in your medical encyclopedia. She saw the look on my face, apologised and began to laugh. What? <laughs> it's just that in the last five minutes we both had to say sorry to each other. We were silent for a while until I eventually plucked up enough courage to ask Marsha why she let people at school call her bog brush. You don't like it, me doing it. You should know better. Anyhow, I don't care about them. I don't need them as friends. They don't bother me. When I want a friend, I'll find someone I actually like. And it'll probably be someone who doesn't care what small-minded people think about them. Somebody who's just him, his own self. Everybody is his own self. Marsha shook her head. No way. Most people go around trying to be the person they think others want them to be. Wow, I mean, what do you say to someone who comes up with something like that? It took me for almost five minutes to just work out what she meant. It was no wonder everyone kept clear of Marsha. Just listening to her talking made me want to go, Ah, oh, stop it, my brain is hurting, it's turning to jelly. So I did. You're making my brain turn to jelly. It's called thinking, Rob, Marsha declared. It's just your brain's not used to it. Thanks a lot. Sorry. You're better than the others at school, but you could try using your brain a bit more, you know. It's all right for you, I whined. It doesn't hurt your brain. You don't know that. I thought, here we go again. She's got an answer for everything. Quick, time to change the subject. This is basically my trick for getting out of anything that seems to be going the wrong way. Change the subject. Uh, what are we going to do about the Vorks? I asked in desperation. Marsha folded her arms and smiled at me. That's typical, she murmured, trying to change the subject. So now Marsha was reading my thoughts too. She gave a long sigh. All right, I guess we'll have to try and get in there again. Without proof, nobody will listen to us. Tonight, I suggested, and she nodded. We'd better make it later than last night, then. My parents will be on double alert. I doubt that. They'll never think you'll be stupid enough to try in, in two nights in succession. Tonight will be ideal. I hope you're right. What about two o'clock? Okay, I'd better go. If people see us talking like this, they'll start thinking stupid things. I thought that sort of thing didn't bother you, I said. I was thinking of you. Marsha snapped back and she strode off, this time without tripping over herself. That evening, I sat upstairs and reread my horoscope. You make a discovery that could change everything. That could only mean what was going to happen tonight. Tonight was the night. We were really going to see the aliens. Romance is in the air. Watch out for that new person in your life. Uh-oh. I didn't want to know about this. I'm too young for romance, I said, and I was startled to hear mum 
the other side of my bedroom door. Are you talking to yourself in there, Robert? It was the aliens, I grunted. Mum opened the door and put her head round the corner. Don't be cheeky. I told you not another word about aliens. Poor Marsh's mother. Heaven alone knows what she thought about last night. Who is that girl anyway? She seemed ever so strange. Mum thinks most people are strange for one reason or another. She'll say things like, Look at that man. Isn't he strange? Or, What a strange woman. Then you look at, at the people she's looking at and there's nothing strange about them at all. What is strange is that you can put a couple of aliens right in front of Mum and she doesn't even notice. Her name's Marsha. She's in my class. She's clever. She didn't look clever and it certainly was not at all clever to go gallivanting round the streets at midnight. She paused and then asked, oh so casually, is she your girlfriend? Mum, that is so predictable. Ooh, that's a big word, Robert. It was in our spelling test last week, I muttered. Can I get on with what I was doing now? What was that? Thinking. Mum widened her eyes and tiptoed theatrically from the room so as not to disturb the great thinker. She didn't know that I was actually thinking about Marsha, or to be more precise, about Marsha and her parents. I tried to imagine what it would be like not having a dad, and I just couldn't. It was too difficult. Then I began worrying. Suppose my dad went off, or mum. I would probably be the last to know. I remember the times they quarrelled, the times they hardly spoke to each other. Maybe this is what my horoscope meant. This was the discovery that could change my life. Maybe the romance was not about, about me at all, but about one of my parents. Maybe the new person in my life was going to be a stepfather or stepmother. No, this was all going horribly wrong. I jumped to my feet and pounded downstairs. Mum was sitting down in front of the television. I swallowed hard. Can I ask you something? Of course. You won't be cross or laugh at me or anything. Mum shook her head. Any other mother would probably have said, I can see there's something worrying you, son. But Mum knew that I was always worried anyway. She kept quiet and waited for me to speak. You know what I wanted to ask? I wanted to say, do you still like Dad? Are you thinking of leaving? But I knew it was stupid. I couldn't ask her questions like that. I tried to think of some other way of putting it, but nothing seemed right. It doesn't matter, I said. Was it about Marsha? Mum prompted with a tiny knowing smile she thought I wouldn't notice. Parents, eh? What do you do with them? You can read them like a book.